Hey everyone, uh, my name is Eric Rops. I am a Insight Data Engineering Fellow, I'm currently based in Calgary, Canada. Uh, so I want to tell you about my project, uh, which is a new way of playing the game of chess. So the online chess world today, um, just a quick overview, there's about 20 million users um, active. Uh, and the main ways that people play are human versus human, obviously, uh, human versus chess engine, if you want to play against a computation algorithm, um, or in the past few years, there have been artificial or artificial intelligence of chess bots that have come out, uh, which are based on reinforcement learning. And you can play against them, but you have you will be absolutely no competition whatsoever uh, for those models. But I was thinking instead of something different, actually. What if instead you wanted to play against all the humans that have ever played before? Uh, that's why I created this human chess engine product. And how it works, um, it's simply a way to play chess against a database. Uh, the user makes their move, and then the database will return the most common next move that was ever made. And here's a quick video demo of the app in action. So the user can go in and select the rating of the opponent they want to play against, and then they'll make their first move. And you'll notice the first two moves actually take a long time, a longer time for the database to query and search. And that's because in the early game, there's so many more common board states, it takes a longer time to filter through them. But then each move that's made, the board state gets more and more unique, such that the, uh, the query results are a lot smaller and come back a lot faster. So you can see here we're on move four, and the response time is very quick. Uh, move five, even faster. So yeah, it was great to see this high speed performance um, of the database perform the database return the queries. Um, so obviously, I can't play a whole game here for you, even though I would like to. Uh, but obviously, you should and could uh, when you use this. So uh, the tech stack I used for this project was uh, bringing the raw chess files from leechess.org and chess.com into Amazon S3, did the data processing using Apache Spark, um, stored the final tables in the Cassandra database, um, and the user interface you just saw was done using Flask. Um, so just a quick overview of the data evolution. The left-hand side is the raw chess files. They're called PGN files. And after the processing, um, uh, I actually had to make the data a lot larger to get this to work. Um, the file table actually had to be exploded to one row for every move that was ever made, and then had to calculate this unique board state string for each move, uh, which was a fairly expensive operation. That I'll tell you more about here. Um, so processing the games, it was a bit, bit tricky because each game had to be done in the proper order so that the board configurations were correct, but also it did not want to have to loop through the entire four billion row table because that would obviously not be efficient. So ended up using a Spark user-defined function uh, to process all the games in parallel, but also in the proper order. And I thought that this step actually would have been the biggest bottleneck in my pipeline. However, by far, the biggest bottleneck was the Cassandra write performance. Uh, so this plot is showing why that's actually an issue. So this is a distribution of the board state, uh, which is our Cassandra partitioning column. Um, you, you can see it's heavily front skewed because in the early game, there's way more common board configurations and lots of overlap. But then in the late game, the board states are so unique there's way less overlap. Um, so unfortunately, um, by default, Spark wants to write, write to Cassandra in batches of the same partition. And that's clearly not what we want here, because you can imagine, if you're writing one at a time, very small partitions, one at a time, that's obviously not efficient. But on the other hand, with these very large partitions in the early game, um, trying to write these one at a time will actually overwhelm your system, which is what happened to me. So to solve this, this default um, batch writing had to be turned off, um, as well as some other writing parameters had to be tuned. So the result was that the writing became a bit faster, uh, but more importantly, became much more stable. And the last thing I want to talk about is the query speed of the database. My goal going into this project was just five seconds per move, just kind of a rough idea. I don't want the user to have to wait too long for the database to respond with the next move. So the first two moves actually took a little over 10 seconds. And as, as you saw in the demo, um, so to address this first two moves, I just limited the query size uh, to achieve five to seven seconds. 
but that was not necessary after move three or move four because as you saw, those responses were, were very fast, uh, less than one second, um, very good performance. So thank you, Cassandra, for doing your job well. So just some future improvements that would be good for this product that I would like, um, uh, attaching airflow to continuously expand the, de the database uh, to minimize no match cases, um, especially in the end game. Uh, and then it'd also be cool to create another Cassandra table um, to allow the option uh, of playing as the black pieces. So just a little bit about me. Um, again, my name is Eric Rops. I have a master's degree in geophysics from the University of Calgary. Also about five years of industry experience uh, using complex uh, data sets to explore for natural resources. So yeah, I already have quite a bit of exposure uh, using these complex data sets to make the value add business decisions. On top of that, I've always had a keen interest in solving programming problems and making things uh, automated, more efficient, and just faster. Uh, so data engineering seemed like a great fit for me. And I'm yeah, very excited to start my career in this space and to help organizations uh, fully leverage their ever-growing massive data sets. So yeah, thanks for listening and thanks for your time.